Greetings and salutations. I'm America's R&B historian, Tyrone Dubois. And my friends, you're watching the one, the only, The Cindy Davis Show. Cindy Davis Evans of the Cindy Davis Show. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Andre Pittman of Anthelon Records. My guest today is a living legend. He received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And for his latest accomplishment, he was inducted into the BMAs. Welcome Grammy Award winner, formerly of the Isley Brothers, Chris Jasper. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you. All right. Yeah, yeah, Chris. So how are you doing throughout this pandemic? Oh, doing fine. I'm uh, doing a lot of recording. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing that I can, you know, do, uh, you know, I don't really do as much as I usually do. But, you know, that's mm -hmm. what you have to do. You have to just be careful, you know. Yeah. So you've been really staying busy then, huh? Yeah. Um, did you ever think you would see anything like this pandemic in your lifetime? Never thought so. No. Wow. Never, never thought it would happen, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, uh, right? Huh? It's crazy, right? Yeah, it's, it's insane. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've never seen something so large, you know, like cover the whole world, like you know. Uh huh. I don't even one country or two countries it's like everywhere everywhere yeah it's, it's like we're all going through the same thing it's it's it's, it's wild i never thought i'd see anything like this either ever <laughs> you know this is one for the history books right that's right that's <laughs> definitely true <laughs> wow so man i'm telling you you um a lot of people don't know that uh you started out with the Isley Brothers when you were just out of high school. Is that right? Yeah. Um, right. Right out of high school. That's when um, I uh, I went to Juilliard. And um, mm -hmm. at the same time that I was at Juilliard, uh, I was doing recording sessions, you know, with, with, with the brothers. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a a really a, a good learning period because on one hand I was doing R&B stuff I was you know recording R&B but then again I was composing classical music at the same time uh -huh. know, like during the week yeah you, you, generally the weekends were when we would go on the road you know and tour mm -hmm. um, and um, you know sometimes during the week we would have a recording session or two but yeah you know, a lot of traveling back and forth from college, you know, getting on planes, going on, you know, going on the road, you know, it was a really good learning experience. Yeah, I bet. So it was you, Ernie, and Marvin. And Marvin, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you, you all had your group together first, yeah. right? Right. We 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 had a group when we were in high school. You know, oh, like, okay. And. Uh, we would tour, we would do like uh, small things, you know, like school dances or, you know, mm -hmm. play at a, you know, a church. It yeah. Was a while, you know, do a church gig. Uh -huh. And um, what happened was that the older guys, they were at Motown at the time. Um, and they, once in a while, they would come to see us play, you know, they would come see us play. But then, then also they would come see us rehearse too, because we had rehearsals at uh, Miss Isley's house. Oh, they, okay. They come and watch us, you know, see how we were doing. And then after a while, they said, hey, man, you guys are, you know, you're really good. You know, you should start recording with us and, and you know, playing with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how, you know, the uh, six-member group got formed. Because mm -hmm. uh, we were two different separate entities at first. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. So what was your first album that y'all uh, uh, collaborated on? Um, the first collaboration, um, 
that the public knew about was three plus three. Oh, okay. Uh, that was uh, in 73. But before uh-huh. that, what, what would happen was um, the older brothers had a band that, that played with them. They, they were called the Midnight Movers. They, uh-huh. they played with them. They had a band leader and everything. We kind of joined in with that band before three plus three. Mm-hmm. So um, it was a gradual kind of merging of, of, of the two, of the three older guys and the three younger guys. We gradually merged into a six men, member band. Oh, okay. We started to, to um, when we got into the, uh, start playing with the Midnight Movers, slowly we started to take more of the music over, you know, the horn section left, you know, uh, the band leader left. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Over time, the Midnight Movers kind of moved out. And, and uh-huh. uh, the three of us younger guys, we, we played, you know, the majority of the music at that point. And so, and, and so the Isley Brothers performed, mm-hmm. all of you, all, all together. The yeah. older ones with, with the younger ones. Did they consider you as a younger brother that they kind of look at you as one of the younger brothers. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah. Um, the three of us younger guys were basically looked at the same way, you know, by the older guys, you know, cause yeah. we were all kind of raised together. We came from the same place in Cincinnati, the same street, you know, uh-huh. the Jaspers and the Isleys. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister met Rudolph at a very young age, you know, teenagers, you yeah. know, I was like two years old at the time. <laughs> Wow. But it was it was it was a family thing, you know, between the two families. You know, we uh-huh. knew each other like all our lives. So yeah. They looked at me just like they looked at Ernie and Mark, you know. Uh, yeah. And so your sister married Rud- Rudolph Isley. Right, right. Uh-huh. Okay. So you ended up being their brother-in-law. <laughs> wow, how cool is that? Right. So it, you know, it was it was just one of those things where we always knew each other and it was you know. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah. we that you know we were all together you know what i mean it was mm-hmm. we, we knew each other like from when i was a baby you know, I was, it's called it's, it's almost like destiny isn't it like it was meant meant for y'all to be together yeah and, and nobody knew it you know <laughs> younger, because when they were doing like shout and everything like that we were we were like really young you know we were, i think i was like eight years old or something like that wow and um you know, nobody kind of knew that that was going to happen. You know? Right, right. Yeah. You ended up uh, writing a lot of the hits for the eyes of, for your group. Um, yeah. yeah, wow. You you wrote um, "Voyage to Atlanta." Is that right? Yeah, it was uh, "For the Love of You." Uh, for the Love of You. Here we go again. Put, life, here we go again. Yeah. Put steps in the whole, dark. Yeah, that whole uh, "Go All the Way" album. Uh, I wrote that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There's so many of the songs, uh, you know. Yeah, let me just name a few more. Harvest for the World, Caravan of Love. Yeah, Caravan. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was after Jasper Icy. And that's when the, the three of us younger guys, you know, formed our own group later. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, later. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we yeah, we're gonna get to that too. Mm-hmm. What is your inspiration um for writing these songs? Let's what comes first for you, the, the lyrics or the music? Uh, generally, the music does. Uh huh. Because uh, you know, I, I guess because I'm a kind of trained composer since I was little, I was, I've always wanted to you know write music, um, and even for the orchestra, I even I even wanted to write for the orchestra, and I did in college, you know. But um, music comes to me quicker than lyrics do. But now that I've been writing for so long, um, the lyrical thing uh, comes too sometimes um, first, you know, where before it was always a melody or a chord, chord progression. Now sometimes uh, I, I get um, a lyrical idea first, uh, but it's always combined with a melody though. It's never just on its own. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, songs come to you in different ways. Yeah. Uh, most of the time when I was younger, it was mm-hmm. from observation. 
you know, like what I used to observe people doing sometimes. Um, sometimes I just get a feeling, you know, sometimes they come in a dream, you know. Oh, like, yeah. like the song The Pride came to me in a dream, you know. What happened? Do you remember? Yes. Um, I, I was dreaming, and, and, and in the dream, we were at a concert, and mm -hmm. I, was, I, I was coming off stage, and, and this guy said to me, hey, I like the song you guys did about the politician, you know. Uh -huh. And so when I woke up, I said, hmm, maybe that might be a good idea, if, you know, a, a song. So yeah. I said, well, if it's going to be about a politician, it's got to be funky. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I started fooling around with some riffs, you know, and, um, you know, finally the song came together. And, yeah. You know, it's about the pride that a lot of people have, you know, that sometimes, right. you know, keeps them from doing their best, you know. And, but, oh, okay. But anyway, but anyway, that song came to me in the dream, and, and other songs have come to me in the dreams. Uh, wow. But, um, you know, a lot of songs are from my personal experience, you know. Uh-huh. Especially now, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, the songs I'm writing now are a lot, a lot from my personal experience, my relationship with my wife, you know. Yes. So, um, yeah, songs come from different, different uh, directions, actually, you know. Wow, wow, that is that is that is totally, totally amazing to me. Um, you also did four gospel albums. Yes, yes. The, mm -hmm. the, really, another part. Of, of me that uh, I really, I really, uh, is, is really important to me, you know, um, mm -hmm. relationship with God. And I, 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 I want that to be something that people, you know, can see. Uh, and and yeah. I like to maybe inform, you know, from, from the scriptures and um, yeah. my whole thing about uh, the lyrics in my songs is to uh -huh. have a person be able to live in this world, but not be of the world. You know, Amen to that. Amen to that. That's the whole my whole perspective. You know, well, mm -hmm. that's the perspective I write from. And oh, okay. Because it's not just praise. You know, a lot, a lot of songs are just praise, and that's fine. You uh -huh. know? And and some of my songs are praise. Yeah. But, um, most of them are about an experience. You know, like invincible. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. the person's personal mm -hmm. experience and conversion. Yeah. You know? the lyrical content is that's what it's about okay um, and other ones are like prayers you know yeah. but um there's a lot of substance in it you know right um, you know from from the bible and from the teachings of jesus christ amen amen we need more of that right we really do yeah. in this world today mm -hmm. yeah um you you redid a song from uh uh by marvin gay uh, i think it was um God loves us. Uh, God is love. I did God is love. God is love, and I, I did a cover of What's Going On, too. I oh, know. you did What's Going On as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. He awesome. was a big influence growing up. Uh, who else were your, who were your influences growing up as well? Um, well, Marvin Gaye was one, of course. Then Sam Cooke was another very strong influence on me at, at, when I was growing up and learning music. Uh, mm -hmm. Charles, you know, um, and the, the whole Motown kind of thing that, that, that they were doing, a lot of great producers and songwriters there. Yeah. So, and that's that's the way I looked at music. You know, I looked at it from a composer standpoint, you know, not just the artist, but, you know, the whole, you know, the arrangement, you know, the music, yeah. all of it. And so Motown, you know, they had a special thing going on there. You know, they, they're, you, could, you could recognize the Motown song as soon as it came up, you know. Yeah. And I always liked that, you know, and, and I, I wanted to create that for, for, for my music, you know, that you could re recognize my music you know, by how it sounds. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful music. I must, I must add as well. Wow. Wow. So a lot of people don't know that you also studied um, law. Did you get your PhD in law? Yeah, my, my, my Jewish doctorate. Yeah, I got that. Oh, uh -huh. and, uh, I really wanted to, to take it because, first of all, my wife was a lawyer. And, oh, okay. Um, I I wanted to learn more about contracts and, and copyright law in particular. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really why I took you know uh, the courses, and um, it, it helps you know to to know what's 
uh, the law has to say about what you're doing, the, the music in general, the copyright law. So um, mm -hmm. that's, that's really why I took it, and, and it helps. And the more you learn, the, you know, if you can't learn enough, that's, that's how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. You need to know as much as you as, as you can, especially in the music industry. So many people have been uh, robbed of their royalties and everything. Did you ever experience anything like that? Um, we, we had some conflicts within the group. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. What about with the record company? But um, record company, um, I haven't experienced it with, with the record company, though. Oh, OK. Um, yeah. Um, you know, some sometimes you have to um, you have to deal with your siblings or your relatives sometimes as you would deal with another person in business. You know. Okay. Yeah. Because if you don't, sometimes you know you can be taken advantage of just because they're your relatives. Family. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to be careful sometimes. Uh, uh, I always say you never know a person unless you live with them or do business with them. Yeah, yeah. Then the real person come so out, you right? Know them until you get in that situation, and uh, yeah. uh, that's that's just my little words of advice. <laughs> well, that well, you know what? That's wisdom. That's wisdom right there. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you began to uh go with uh Isley Jasper Isley how did that come about uh well let's see we uh that's a that's one of the conflicts I, I alluded to uh, oh, okay uh, we were in a different situation than the older guys were uh, yeah we didn't have quite the amount of debt or anything that they had you know oh, okay and their whole financial situation was different than ours oh okay uh, we just said look you know we could just form another group, you know. Yeah. And, um, that's kind of what happened. They, we kind of split off because of those reasons. Mm -hmm. You couldn't you come. You couldn't come into agreement with. It just, it just wasn't possible. Yeah. To, to keep functioning as six uh, members, you know that, that that's how that's how strange the financial situation was. It just it just wasn't possible to keep going up as that unit. Okay. But, um. The three of us had to, to go off and do our kind of do our own thing, and um, that's what we did. And you know, we recorded three albums together. Caravan of Love was one of them. That was the biggest one. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was a big one. Did you get a Grammy for that one, or were you nominated? Actually, we didn't get a we didn't get a Grammy for that. Uh, I, oh, I, thought okay. was, I thought it would be because it was such a big song, you know. <laughs> you know yeah. Even even the, the Grammys are political, you know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, always, right? Always Everything is always political. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Was, that was our biggest uh, hit when we were as a three member group, and that was a very special song for me because that's when I started to uh, really get get more understanding about the scriptures and the Bible and all that, and and and, and the lyrics are taken, you know, from the scriptures, you know. Absolutely, about love. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah, it's all about together, love. People coming together for all ages and you know, mm -hmm. ages and everything. It was, Absolutely. It was, it was. I was very happy that that song was as big as it was, and and big as it is because people all over the world still, still sing it. Yeah. I, yeah, it's still popular. Yeah, and um, because it's a good message. It's a message that we all should have. You know. Right. It's a message of love, but not just. I mean, everybody coming together. Yeah. A caravan and, and, uh, of love. It doesn't get better than that. That we did with that really captured that because there were there were people from all nationalities. Yeah. In the group, you know, the caravan of love video. Uh huh. Um, I did did a good job capturing the lyrical meaning. You know, when they did that video. Absolutely, absolutely, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, even to this day, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I want to ask you about those 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 funky costumes the Isley Brothers wore. Who who did your costumes? Yeah, uh, this guy named Bernard Johnson, he did some of them. Uh, he was, he was, he did a lot of things for uh, Broadway. Uh-huh. Broadway costumes and everything. And so uh, Bernard did some, and then uh, Gorgeous George did some of them too. Gorgeous George was an MC. Uh -huh. He was for a long time. He worked with Marvin Gaye. He worked with everybody almost. Uh, wow. Everybody knew Gorgeous George. But he, he made <laughs> some of the, uh, uh, so, some of the outfits too. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They were amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, that was that was one of the uh, signature things about the Isler Brothers is that that music and those costumes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, kind of wild, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all kind of set the standard, you know. I mean, that's what they did back then. They wore the elaborate costumes, and you know that 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 was worth going to see you at the concert. Was what you're going to wear? Yeah, that was that was a big thing back then. You know, you, yeah. The more, the more it shined, the better it was. You know. Yeah, you know, yeah. Stones and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Not was, so much yeah. now. But yeah. you know, guys like Elvis, you know, they had the same thing, you know, That's the, true. And the, the rhinestone. So yeah, that was the big thing back then. Uh, the Commodore yeah. too. They had the no. on the fire. Yeah. That was the thing. That that was. That was. What do you think you would be doing if you were not a musician? Well, I was studying architecture at one time. Oh, really? Yeah, actually, uh, I was gonna go to college for architecture. Wow. And um I had the opportunity to audition for Juilliard too. Uh huh. So I said, well, I've been doing music because I've been doing music since I was seven years old. Uh huh. Architecture was only maybe like a three, four year program. So I said, well, I've been studying music longer. <laughs> so I'm going <laughs> to, you know, audition for Juilliard. And so that's what I did. That's how I made the decision. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think you made the best decision there. I think I made the right decision. <laughs> I think you did. I think you did well. <laughs> what instruments do you play, though? Um, keyboard is my main thing. Piano is the main thing. That's what I learned on. Yeah. Uh, I play drums. I play bass and a little bit of guitar too. You brought that classical style to the to the Isley Brothers' uh, signature music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you have your keyboard there with you? Where's that? Do you have your keyboard? Can you can you play something for us? Oh no, I, I don't have it hooked up right now. This you don't? Oh, okay. Studio, but it's not everything's not hooked up because I've been doing a little re renovating here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Every once in a while, I'll I'll change things up, you know. I'll yeah. Add a little something and take something away, but um, uh -huh. my son Michael, he's he's he works with a lot of my technical stuff. Uh huh. So. I don't have my technician here. <laughs> I, have, I have things disconnected. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I, I like to play, you know, every once in a while. But yeah. the classical thing, that's part, that's what, that's what I learned on. I, I learned uh -huh. classical music. And I told my uh, professor I wanted to be a, a composer like, you know, the guys who wrote the music, you know. And he mm -hmm. said, well, you know, you got to work hard. You got you to gotta yeah. learn a lot of things. You got to learn how to orchestrate. Yeah. I had the right for other instruments. Uh -huh. know? So I said, okay. You know, but and when, when you take composition, you got to take everything, you know, in, in music. And uh, I'm glad I did because it gives me a different approach. It gives me a different perspective. Like uh, even now I can do my own music. I don't need a yeah. lot of people to come in and do my music for me. Yeah. And because, you know, I have a, a pretty broad understanding of music and how to put it together. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's kind of switch gears to when you um, got your Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, where were you when you got the call? Um, well, I had, I had several Lifetime Achievement Awards. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which well, ones did you feel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, excuse right, me. Oh, <laughs> Well, you tell you tell me how many how many lifetime achievement awards do you have? Um, let me look. Around. There's one. That's soundtracks, BMA, um, BET, uh, Grammy behind me. That's four. Okay. That's four so you got. Five. And the the German uh, well got one from Germany, so it's like five of them. Yeah, that's BET, Grammys. Yeah, um, um, the Soul Tracks, uh, BMA. Oh, yeah, the BMAs, yes. Um, and that's the, your recent one, the BMA is the recent one. Yeah, that's the most recent one. Uh-huh. Germany. So that's five where that I can think of right now. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, wow, yeah. so we... When you when you got the call about the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, where were you? I was sitting in my living room, uh, mm -hmm. 
and I was, I think I was watching TV. And, <laughs> home ring, you know, and I'm like, mm, you know, hello, and it's the guy, it's the president of uh, the, the academy there, called me. Yeah. And he says, you know, I have a, like a surprise for you. Yeah. I said, okay. I said, okay. Is it good? <laughs> said, okay, well, he said, you know, you guys are, are going to receive the uh, the lifetime achievement award from a Grammy. Wow. Will you be a, Will you be able to attend? I said, yeah, of course, of course, you know, something like that. Of course, I'll be there. Yeah. So you know, he congratulated me again, and uh, I hung up the phone, and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty big one, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's it's great to be recognized like that, you know. Um, I don't think of things like that because I'm always thinking of ideas and music, you know. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's good. The, the recognition is always good. Yeah. But I'm always thinking of how how I, how I can make my music better. I, you know? see. I think that's because of the, the compositional background and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always... My favorite part of the music business has been always been recording new music. Yeah. That's, that's I get the biggest thrill out of having a, a new song completed, you know. Yeah. And anything else. And, wow. Um, it's just a great thing. And, and the songwriter uh, Hall of Fame, we, we just got recognition for that. We haven't been able to meet and have that uh, ceremony because of COVID, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Pushing it back and pushing it back, you know. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's because of COVID, and but yeah, that, that's another recognition that that, uh, that I've gotten, you know, and you know, along with the group too. Oh, wow, that's that's a beautiful thing. And the BMAs, how did you how did how were you recognized for that? Did you get a call? Uh, actually, I got a um, a letter. Oh, ah, okay. Form of a letter, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, I did talk to someone there I, I forget who it was but um and and you know they they went on to explain you know how it would be done this was when there was good it, it wasn't postponed it was going to say well it's going to be in june blah 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 you know it's going to be at this place in in, in manhattan yeah, yeah. And then COVID hit <laughs> oh yeah right <laughs> and then everything changed you know and it got pushed back at, at least two times i don't know if it's if we got a new date for it or not. Yeah, it's still up in the air, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But that's another recognition. That, and that, I, I think of, out of all of them, the songwriter one is probably right at the top because that's what I started when I was a, a real little kid wanting to, wanting to be as a composer. Wow. <laughs> you know? And um, it, it's a special one for me. You know. Yeah, yeah. What What are you working on now? You um, are you working on a love song? Are you working on gospel song? Um, or or tell me about the songs you have out now that's recent. Um, the way you love me that that's a ballad. Um, mm -hmm. that was that's the first uh, single from this album I'm working on. Uh, okay. It's it's been out you know a, a little while, a few months now, but it's um, it's kind of back to you know the synthesizer work that I that I do a lot you know yeah I, lots of voices going on in there and everything and it was really really fun to work on it you know uh -huh. I'm working on a, some some other songs one one's a love song but that I, I've got some real funky stuff on here too I mean <laughs> yeah. It, like yeah, see that's 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 part that you know a lot of people don't do a lot anymore. Yeah. Uh, and I and I think the reason is there's you know, musicians have changed their focus sometimes. You know, people who are musicians have kind of changed their focus. Uh huh. Uh, and a lot of the artists now are not musicians. You know, they have other people to do their music for, and then they sing. You know, a lot of them are just singers. Mm -hmm. Don't have bands anymore, right? Like, you know, and funk, because of that, is not really as prevalent as it used to be. 
but I like to throw it in there anyway. <laughs> you know Make mean? it funky, right? I, I, can, I can still do it. Uh, you know, I, I still have that in me. You know, it, it's got to be in you to be able to play funk, you know. Yeah. Take the yeah. To the face, you know, the pride, you know. Oh, so, man. <laughs> those, are, those are things that I wrote that are funk, you know, really heavy funk. And, and that's another part of my contribution to the group. You know, uh-huh. yeah, the love ballads are one, but the funk is also yeah. Chris Jasper, you know what I mean? That's, that's a- absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I, I keep that in my music now. You know, mm-hmm. so okay. Real funky stuff on here. What do you like to do for fun, you and your wife? Um, we do a lot, you know, we we love love the movies. We both love the oh, movies. Yeah. Love the movies. Yeah. I like the I like the movies because you know for a lot of different reasons, but especially for scores. I always listen to the scores. You always listen to yeah, yeah, listen yeah. to the scores and but, stuff. Uh, yeah, we like to go to movies. You know, you know, just I guess same stuff everybody else like to go out to dinner. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Family, we got we both have huge families, so there's always a family something going on. Oh. <laughs> you know, that's so awesome, man. Go over there, so we go to this person's house. We go over there. You know socializing like that you know yeah 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 me too yeah we me and my husband love to do that kind of stuff too movies out to eat going to visit family just doing things what uh, can you recall any of the most embarrassing moment that you've uh, incurred when you were with the Isler brothers on stage or or not yeah well on stage yeah um we were doing the jazz festival in kansas city and um p-funk was on the tour and mm-hmm. uh, you know Shaka Khan, a lot of other people, and our opening song that yeah, we were opening with "Fight the Power," and we got like a minute into the song, and all the power cut off, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's like you're up there, no sound is coming out, you know. And I, I think the only thing that was on was the microphones. Yeah. <laughs> you know? How is that possible? I don't know. We like <laughs> pulled the plug on us. We, we talked about that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like somebody pulled a plug on you. <laughs> pulled out a mothership and then, you know, <laughs> then unplugged all that stuff. What happened? Because you know, it was up there. The mothership was up there, you know. Wow. But that was that was kind of embarrassing, yeah. It was. Yeah. <laughs> How long did that last? I mean, we are without power for the after thirty seconds to a minute. Oh, which is, and, you know, that could seem like an eternity, right? Like forever when you're on stage, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. And it comes back on, you know, and it's like, oh boy, all right. Yeah. Who's on your playlist? Huh? Who's on your playlist? Who do you listen to these days? Um, I have a long, you know, a pretty big playlist yeah yeah um wow classical stuff i listen to jazz oh okay uh, i listen to um you know blues of andros you know yeah 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 bars i mean you know i like i like really stuff that transcends kind of the the era you know what i mean Uh uh-huh because a lot of a lot of I like even some of Sinatra stuff, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I like a whole range of things. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, and I think uh, that's that's from my upbringing too. You know, in my uh, my education because we were always encouraged listen to everything. Oh. There's there's always something going on, you know, mm-hmm. in other genres even. Yes. You can benefit that you can learn from. So like, I'm always learning. I'm always listening and like, trying to learn something else. And so I guess that's a habit I got into. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the best way to be. That, that's that's great. Yeah. I'm always trying to pick up little, you know, tidbits. You know. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the music today, though? You know, um, you kind of touched on it that it's not enough funk. You know, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of uh, one dimensional. Yeah, it. it's lacking. It's lacking a lot of character, don't you think? Yeah, I I, I did that one day. I was sitting out. I dropped my wife off for something. I was waiting for, her, and I said, "Let me turn to this FM station and see what they're playing." Because I usually play my playlist in the car, you know. 
Uh-huh. And I turn to the station and see what they're playing. And I listened to four songs, and they all sounded like the same song. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Even the vocals were, like, so similar, you know? And I was like, wow, you know? Because I, I remember a time when I used to listen to the radio, and we used to keep, when I was in college, keep WBLS on our, on our, our station, mm -hmm. right? That's the station in New York here. Mm -hmm. And everything, there was so much variety. Yeah. Aretha, Stevie Wonder, oh, you know, Curtis Mayfield. Oh, wow. It was, like, it was like so many different types of styles coming at you, you know, one after another, you know what I mean? Absolutely. That beautiful. That's, that was the beautiful thing about that era. Yeah. Is that you had Everybody so, had their own style. Just in R&B itself. Yeah. You had so many different styles. You had James Brown would come out. You know what oh, I mean? Man, it was like man. so many different styles, and it was it was beautiful, man. And um, that's the thing I miss. That's mm -hmm. the thing I miss in today's music. Yeah, is, is those different directions, those those told totally, totally And that's what I said when when people stop being musicians. Mm -hmm. That's that's what happens. You yeah, know? Uh, musicianship is not like it used to be. Um, mm. You know, all the people I named were musicians. Aretha Franklin, musician. Stevie Wonder, musician. Curtis Frazier, a musician. You know what I mean? Yeah, they didn't just sing. They, yeah, they, they wrote played. and played their music. You see what I mean? James yeah. Brown, uh, um, Ray Charles. Yeah. You know, all those guys. Marvin Gaye, a lot of people don't oh. know about him. He was a musician. He's a really good piano player. Yeah. You know? um, and that, I think that helps a person find their direction yeah it does. they also play an instrument yes you know what i mean you, Triple can, threat. <laughs> you can find your style you can kind of create your style by what you yeah. play you absolutely know, you know george benson and, and and curtis mayfield both guitar players mm -hmm. but they have different styles yes you know, they found their own kind of niche you know that that I yeah i miss that so <laughs> much too that's what's missing today I miss that so much too. You know, when the radio came on and it was Aretha, you knew it was Aretha. You know, you knew it was George Benson. You knew who it was because they had their own signature style. You, you know, the eyes of the brothers, the Frankie Commodores. Beverly, right? Frankie Beverly and May. You know, yeah. You just go on and on. They're all musicians. Yes, absolutely. What did you do with your first big check? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I was, you know what I did? I have to be honest. I, I went to the bank and I just deposited and left it there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just at looked at it high, just, you know. <laughs> I've always been like, you know, uh, you know, I've been like this musician on one hand, but then this really like financial kind of person on the other hand. Oh, hand. okay. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I think I've read almost every financial book in the library. Really? That's all I used to do is read read about banking, stocks, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, I, okay. I have a stack of books <laughs> in my library. You know, so like that's what I did when I when I got a first big check. I said, wait a second, I'm not gonna spend it. I'm just gonna I'm gonna save it. You're I'm gonna, gonna save it. Wow. Just like it. Uh huh. So, how did you handle your success? Um, how do I handle? Like I said, I I don't. I don't really look at, I, I never really looked at how people saw me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some entertainers are like, oh, well, I want to be out there, you know, in the limelight, you know, you, you know, I have to be recognized. I never looked at it like that. You know, I just said, like, how good did I, how good was the last album, you know, I did? Ah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? I always looked at it from the creative standpoint. Mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, I think that's why I never got into drugs. I never got into any craziness, you wow. know, because I was kind of rooted yeah. in, in creating. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and um, I think I think my mother had a lot to do with you know how I was raised too. You know, Absolutely, don't think too much of yourself. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> don't, you know, come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, 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 you know that's how I always felt. I always. So I said, I'm just like everybody else. I just happen to write songs. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, play play music. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just you just do it better than a lot of other people, right? <laughs> you know well, what I mean? 
just be real. You know how people say be real? Yeah. Yeah, and just I, be real. I, be I, yourself. I, was, I, was, I, was, I never thought, you know, I was that important. <laughs> right. Music, you know? Right, right. And um, I'm happy I'm able to do it. You know, I'm happy I was able to, I look back sometimes, I look in this room, this room is like, Full of gold records and stuff, and I'm looking at it like I did some. I was I was part of all this stuff. <laughs> I'm like it's kind of like an out of body experience, you think? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's almost sometimes when I hear stuff, the older stuff. Sometimes I said, "Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about that for a while, but wow, that's that's nice." Yeah. You know, and I hear I hear what I played on it and everything. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. You know, I, I've never had. You know, this kind of giant eagle like some people have and when, when i when i see it i'm like you know wow that's how do you get to that point wow where you, where you get where you think you're so important yeah right how do you get to that point how do you get to that point yeah yeah you you yeah. that that's what that's pride you know that's yeah how, how do you get that puffed up how do you yeah exactly exactly you have to check you, yourself you look like everybody else you know flesh and blood you know everybody you know yeah i appreciate that too i appreciate that <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, never, I never felt that way. I never yeah. felt that way. That's great. That's, that's, that's a wonderful thing. You know, I can tell, you know, you have a wonderful spirit. Just, just talking to you and, you know, you being here, it says a lot. It, it says a lot. What do you want people to know about you? Um, well, of course I want them to know my music, but um, yes. As a person, I'm a I'm a family person. I'm a father. Yeah. I'm a husband. Humble. Uh, I'm a follower of Christ. Yes. That's Amen to that. And I try to live that way. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, that's that's who I am. Amen. And I, I'm so I'm I'm so thankful that uh, I can call you a brother in Christ. <laughs> Amen. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Because without him, we can do nothing, right? Right. I can do anything. We can't do anything without him. Right. I just want to say thank you so much for all this music you wrote that shaped my formative years as a as a as a preteen, all these beautiful, all the beautiful music. I listened to, you know, Footsteps in the Dark Voyage of Atlanta and Harvest for the world and just and just <laughs> reminisce and think about all the wonderful, wonderful times that uh, that I had because of this music is it's just so many beautiful memories. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you personally. Thank you for that. Never thought I would ever get the opportunity to say that. But here I am. <laughs> well, that's that's beautiful because that's. That's what this whole thing is about to me, you know, yeah. recording the music and that it touches somebody, you know, that yeah. that person can feel what I felt, you know, or yeah. part of what I felt when I wrote it, you know, that, that it means something, you know, that's, that's, that's really important to me. And uh, I appreciate what you just said. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. Now, uh, where can people find you? Uh, tell us about your website. Uh, well, ChrisJasper.com. Okay, that's simple enough. That's where you can find all of my stuff. All of my music is there mm -hmm. and um, what I'm doing. So, yeah, ChrisJasper.com. Well, I've been talking to the wonderful and humble Chris Jasper from the Isley Brothers, formerly of the Isley Brothers. And uh, I just, I want to just thank you for sharing with us and coming on and talking with me it means so much and i just want to thank you for being here well thank you thank you for having me <laughs> all right well until next time god bless <laughs>